in this lecture, we will be discussing Chapter 10 in your reimbursement textbook. This is the last chapter of the book. In today's lecture, we will be covering these objectives of Chapter 10. In a landmark 2001 report, Crossing the Quality Chasm, the Committee on Quality of Healthcare in America of the Institute of Medicine stated that the U.S. healthcare delivery system needed fundamental change as, quote, quality problems are everywhere affecting many patients. The report's authors called for the redesign of the U.S. healthcare system to support the delivery of quality healthcare. One characteristic of that redesign was the alignment of payment incentives and quality. This alignment is the basis of pay for performance or P4P or PFP. You may see that called. The Institute of Medicine's 2007 report also indicated ongoing problems in quality of healthcare delivery systems, both in the public and private sectors. These systems then were called value-based purchasing or VBP. The systems and terms based on these initiatives are still emerging and evolving. The systems do vary from payer to payer or program to program. Value-based purchasing and pay-for-performance systems reflect a widespread movement in the healthcare industry toward quality and toward safety. These systems sometimes will link reimbursement, performance, and quality. These are driven by rising healthcare costs and studies that have reported poor quality. In the private sector, these systems are endorsed by large private employers that seek to increase the quality and safety of health care. In the public sector, this movement really is known as an element of the federal health care reimbursement system. Both sectors believe that these systems will encourage providers to deliver high quality care in a cost-effective and cost-efficient manner. Although some healthcare experts use the terms BBP and P4P interchangeably, others do make some distinctions between the two. Some common distinctions are cost. VBP is improved quality for the same cost where P4P is additional payments for increased quality. Another factor is the setting. P4P is common in the private sector, such as a health care plan. VBP is the current term for the public sector, such as Medicare or CMS payment systems. The last distinction is duration. P4P is associated with systems that have been established since about 2004. And common use of VBP dates to its use in the Deficit Reduction Act of 2005. Pay for performance, or P4P, may be defined as any type of provider's payment system that is based on performance and incentives. Examples of performance include maintaining or maybe improving the quality of care or meeting targets of profitability. Quality is often assessed by evidence-based process measures, such as the number of eligible women who receive pap smear tests. VBP is defined as a system in which purchasers hold providers of health care accountable for both the cost of health care and its quality. 
Purchasers are public and private sector entities. Some characteristics of VBP include it integrates information on healthcare quality with cost data. The focus is on managing the use of the healthcare system to reduce inappropriate care and also to identify and reward the best performing providers. The rising costs of healthcare have motivated payers to investigate and seek out some of these systems. Underpinning this decision is the payer's perception that quality has not improved with increasing costs. So therefore, Sponsors of these pay-for-performance systems typically list some goals, and those include reward provision of quality of care, improving the quality of care, controlling costs directly and indirectly by reducing errors and inappropriate utilization. These goals are broad, and they are all-inclusive. Some healthcare entities may have additional sub goals. On a limited basis, forms of P4P have existed since the early 1970s. At that time, Dr. Walter McClure advocated the Buy Right program. By 2005, more than 100 sponsoring entities, including healthcare plans, employer payer coalitions and Medicare and Medicaid programs have initiated P4P payment systems and P4P and VBP models are still evolving today. The buy right program of the 1970s was aimed at corporate purchasers of health care. It combined quality improvement, incentives and efficiency measures. Since then, health plans have sponsored P4P systems. In November of 2000, an important player in the development of P4P systems is the LeapFrog Group. It is supported by the Business Roundtable and other contributors. The goal of the LeapFrog Group is to positively affect the quality and affordability of health care by leaping forward improvements in a hospital's quality and safety through rewards. The BTE, or Bridges to Excellence, is a not-for-profit organization that was established in 2003. The BTE includes employers, physicians, researchers, and other healthcare experts. It has, it's basically a program that rewards individual physicians and group practices for improving their systems, adopting new technology, and delivering quality outcomes to their patients. BTE's programs emphasize all characteristics described as key to the Institute of Medicine's redesigned healthcare system, and that's STEEP, which is safe, timely, effective, efficient, equitable, and patient-centered. Another important player in the private sector is the IHA in California, which was established in 2003. It's a statewide program that covers seven health plans 225 physician organizations, purchasers, consumer advocate groups, and about 6.2 million enrollees. The IHA applies one common, uniform set of performance measures to all of its participating organizations. The performance measures are similar to the HIDAS or the NCQA. So every year, the IHA produces performance scores that are based on these measures for the physician organization. 
The National Committee for Quality Assurance is a not-for-profit organization that was established in 1990. Its mission is to improve the quality of health care. It provides standards which healthcare entity, entities excuse me, can measure their performance based on indicators. Early P4P programs targeted primary healthcare physicians and HMOs. It has now expanded to more types of medical specialists, preferred provider organizations, and hospitals. Consumer involvement is through reports and consumer-directed health care. A series of reports by the Medicare Payment Advisory Commission, or MedPAC, really set the stage for CMS's implementation of VBP, usually called P4P by MedPAC. This implementation is detailed in the second half of this chapter. As early as March of 2003, MedPAC called on Medicare to consider VBP models from the private sector. At this time, the discussion was narrowly focused on analyzing options for CMS's method of paying for new technology. In June of 2003, MedPAC recommended that CMS explore incentives to induce quality care. One option the report's authors discussed was paying differentials for providers or plans. Paying providers or plans bonuses or higher payments for performance based on quality measures benefits those who make the changes necessary to improve care. In 2004, MedPAC continued to sponsor linking financial incentives and quality by recommending P4P in its report on Medicare payment policies. In 2005, MedPAC returned to the term VBP, but in its current expanded meaning, the authors of the report stated Medicare should move toward value-based purchasing by differentiating among providers on their quality and their efficiency, thereby, therefore sending clear signals to providers about what the program wants to pay for. MedPAC continues to support CMS's implementation of VBP or P4P in its reports and letters. Several state Medicaid systems have implemented P4P systems. In 2006, 28 states had implemented at least one P4P program, with several having implemented multiple programs in their Medicaid payment systems. Within the next five years, several of these states with existing programs were planning to expand their P4P systems. In addition, there are 15 more states who are planning to implement P4P systems within that same period of time. As an example, between 2002 and 2007, six states had implemented P4P systems for nursing home reimbursement. P4P is an international movement as early as 2004, the United Kingdom had a P4P program. There is also interest in the P4P systems in Canada. Healthcare analysts in Canada are monitoring the experiences of the United Kingdom and the U.S. They feel that observing these experiences will identify consideration for a potential Canadian implementation. Australia's Medicare program has implemented pay for performance. The increasing number of P4P systems demonstrate the trend's growing influence. In 2003, there were 39 systems. In 2004, that number doubled to 78. 
the wide range of sponsoring entities of these 78 systems further demonstrates the growing influence. Theoretically, P4P and VVP systems use rewards to motivate providers to render quality health care. Literature reviews of the research on these systems have found modest positive results. Studies on some specific aspects of the systems are lacking. For example, research studies on the return on investment of these systems are scarce. Well-conducted research is needed. Both advantages and disadvantages can occur to healthcare organizations that do implement P4P systems. The advantages include demonstrated commitment to providing quality care, establishing an infrastructure for reporting quality, rewards for providing quality care, transparent process of rewards, and the ability to focus on undeserved or high-risk groups. Similarly, the disadvantages include implementation of intervention that is not evidence-based, the potential for unintended consequences such as poor quality in unmeasured processes, lack of accepted model with each system uniquely tailored for each healthcare entity, difficulty in measuring processes and outcomes, Difficulty in assessing measures that involve patient compliance, such as smoking cessation. Potential that costs of implementation could be better spent on other efforts. And also better documentation of care rather than actual better quality of care. VBP and P4P are emergent payment systems. As earlier discussed in the chapter, we have determinants and categories. The LeapFrog Group offers the LeapFrog Hospital Recognition Program. This program is a reward-based incentive program. The LeapFrog Hospital Recognition Program recognizes and rewards hospitals that demonstrate excellence or improve performance in patient safety, quality, and resource utilization. The IHA of California aligns the pay for performance measures of seven different health plans. This alignment across multiple health plans makes the IHA unique. The goal is to substantially improve the quality of health care by implementing financial and non-financial incentives. As we previously talked about, P4P and BBP have existed in the public sector for more than a decade. Medicare, or excuse me, Medicaid has used these models since the late 1990s. On the federal side, CMS's pilot projects date back to 2003. These systems are incentive-based. In the operation of P4P and VBP systems, the allocation and reward of incentives must be fair. To be fair, the provider who rendered the care should receive the incentive. Determining who rendered care is termed attribution. Attribution is important because it allows the cost of a patient's care and the outcomes of that care to be specified to a specific provider. These systems do link incentives and performance. Incentives may be positive in the form of rewards or negative in the form of penalties. The level of incentive must be sufficient to induce a change in the behavior. 
The sufficient amount of incentive varies by setting and by situation. Most healthcare entities that implement P4P systems begin small and then expand operations over time. CMS does use an incremental implementation. CMS withheld 0.4% of the payment update from hospitals that did not participate in public reporting of quality measures. Researchers do recommend that these systems focus on targets such as the most significant problems with quality or with cost, the population that's covered, and also the availability of valid and reliable performance measures. Success of operations also depends on other factors such as the incentives, the organization's infrastructure, the culture of quality, and also effective leadership. Measures or indicators are tools that provide an indication of an individual's or organization's excuse me, performance in relation to specified processes or outcomes via the measurement of actions, processes, or outcomes of care or services. Value-based purchasing was mandated in 2005 by the DRA. It requires CMS to develop a plan for implementation of a VBP program. As established by Congress, the plan must consider these issues. The ongoing development, selection, and modification of measures of quality and efficiency in inpatient settings, the reporting, collection, and validation of quality data, the structure of payment adjustments, including the determination of thresholds for improving quality, the disclosure of information on hospital performance. CMS has published a roadmap for implementing value-driven health care in the fee-for-service program, and the website is listed here if you want to take some time and review that. The development of quality measures is the first step in establishing a VVP program. Therefore, CMS has established pay-for-reporting programs in several service areas. Value to par participate or submit data results in a 2% reduction in payment for hospital inpatient prospective payment systems. After establishing the need to collect data on quality measures comes the need to pay for quality performance. CMS has investigated P4P through several, several demonstration projects including the Premier Hospital Quality Incentive Demonstration. The success of that project was reported to Congress in 2007. In that report, CMS supports the introduction of a broad VBP payment policy for hospitals. To move to a mature VBP program, CMS desires to pay for value, that is to promote efficiency and resource use while providing high quality care. To achieve this goal, CMS will create efficiency models that inform providers about the value of their care. Section 5001 of the DRA requires the secretary to implement the hospital acquired conditions provision to the inpatient prospective payment system. This additional component, component excuse me, uses ICD-9 CM diagnosis codes and present on admission indicators to identify quality issues. The secretary must identify at least two conditions that are high cost or high volume. 
for discharges occurring on or after October 1 of 2008. The DRA mandated that CMS perform a quality adjustment to the CMS DRG payment for certain conditions that were not present on hospital admissions, but were acquired during the hospital stay. In 2008, the IPPS final rule, Medicare finalized conditions that were included in the provision. They selected eight conditions or categories for implementation. And listed here are the eight conditions or categories which can also be found in your textbook. In summary, both of these systems link financial rewards and provision of quality health care. They focus on significant problems in health care. They use reliable and valid measures and offer incentives for key aspects of implementation. And Medicare CMS demands for the right care for every person every single time.